Steven Spielberg's 1977 film, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, was a creative, critical, and commercial triumph, saving Columbia Pictures from financial disaster. Although Spielberg wasn't interested, the studio wanted a sequel. However, after witnessing Universal Studios' less-than-artful franchising of Jaws, Spielberg feared Columbia would make a follow-up without him, and began conceptualizing what would later be known as Night Skies. While not a direct sequel to Close Encounters, Spielberg's treatment was inspired by the Kelly Hopkinsville encounter of 1955. Brought to Spielberg's attention by UFOologist J. Allen Hynek while he worked as a consultant on Close Encounters, the reported incident involved a Kentucky farmhouse that was supposedly attacked by three-foot-tall aliens. The occurrence was later explained to have been a bad mix of meteor showers, horned owls, and intoxication. From there, Spielberg contacted special effects master Rick Baker to design the alien creatures. To translate his treatment into a script, Spielberg, a fan of the Jaw spoof Piranha, hired its screenwriter John Sales. Sales' script gave personality to its five aliens, which Baker seems to have been articulating in his designs. The menacing scar killed the farm's livestock with his long, luminescent finger, while the childlike buddy befriended the rural family's ten-year-old autistic son and was abandoned on Earth by his bullying comrades. Spielberg received a tape of Baker's animatronic prototype and Sales' draft in the summer of 1980 while shooting Raiders of the Lost Ark abroad in London and Tunisia. As he was under contract to direct his next film for Universal, Spielberg decided on producing the film, which was slated to begin filming once Raiders had wrapped. The project was offered to Texas Chainsaw Massacre director Toby Hooper, who declined, but suggested the two collaborate on a ghost story. This collaboration became 1982's Poltergeist, and the Kentucky farmhouse invaded by aliens from Sales' script became a suburban California home infested with spirits. Upon having Spielberg read her the script to Night Skies, Harrison Ford's then-girlfriend, screenwriter Melissa Matheson, was moved to tears by the connection between the young, autistic boy and Buddy the Alien. Matheson convinced the director the subplot was worth expanding. Spielberg, too, felt a need to return to a deeper spiritual story akin to the connection he presented with the finale of Close Encounters. And so, Matheson was put in charge of further developing the premise of interplanetary friendship into a script that eventually became E.T., the Extraterrestrial, in 1982. Columbia passed on the film, calling it a wimpy Walt Disney movie, and since Spielberg was recommitted to direct the more personal project, it became his contract-fulfilling film for Universal. Sometime after the release of Poltergeist and E.T., Spielberg came across a script by screenwriter Chris Columbus titled Gremlins about a small town becoming overrun with short, green, goblin-like creatures. Without a doubt, Spielberg saw similarities between his shelf project and Columbus's script when he bought it, and Spielberg oversaw rewrites that drew even closer comparisons. Gremlins, Stripe, is reminiscent of Night Sky's Scar, while the Mogwai Gizmo mirrors the role of Buddy in being the sole innocent being of an otherwise unruly species. Again looking to Piranha, Spielberg hired its director, Joe Dante, for the picture, and it was released in 1984. Nods to both Night Skies and E.T. can be found in the film, as their working titles, Watch the Skies and A Boy's Life, are displayed on a movie theater marquee. These projects emphasize an important aspect of Spielberg's creativity, of knowing when ideas aren't working and when and how they can be better implemented. The director had previously experimented with this on a smaller scale, with a coat hanger gag he cut from 1979's 1941, and reworked for his following film, Raiders of the Lost Ark. 
Although Night Skies was never made, in many ways what audiences did get was better. If you want to know more about Spielberg and Hooper's collaboration during the making of Poltergeist, I suggest checking out my video on it. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my other videos.